Our second forecasting technique is something called a moving average. And I think you'll get why the name is what it is. So, you know, moving, so the average is not always going to be the same. An average, you know, this function or this expression over here reminds me of taking an average of n things. So, tell me what's different between this and the naive forecast. Well, the, the naive forecast only used one piece of historical information to make a forecast. This one is actually using n pieces of information from the past to forecast for the present. So if you think about it, if this is a moving average, they call it an MA3 process, so that I'm, I'm looking at a, a three time periods of, of information to make an average, I, I can't make a forecast in time period one because I don't have three pieces of information in the past to forecast from. I can't even start forecasting in time period two because in time period two, I only have one piece of information in the past. I can't forecast in time period three because I only have two pieces of past information to make this equation work. I can only start forecasting with this equation when I'm making a forecast in week three for week four. Okay. So what does this expression tell me to do? So T in this expression is four. So this sum says I starting at one, I need information from A sub three plus one minus one. So I need A three. And then I goes up by one number to two. A sub three plus one is four, minus two is two. So I need A sub two. Now I indexes up again to the last number in our MA3 process, the number three. So I go from A, three plus one is four, minus three is one. So I need A sub one. So the forecast for time period four is actually equal to the average of the prior three time periods. So hopefully now it's obvious why I had to start my forecast in time period three for time period four. It's because I, I had to start there because I otherwise I wouldn't have enough information to calculate this average. So here's my first forecast. This forecast is made in time period three, and it uses information to get a forecast for time period four by using time periods one, two, and three actual data. Now, I should be able to just copy this function in order to create, and why not adjust, we don't need all those decimals, all right, forecasts are going to be wrong anyway. Why don't we just carry a couple of decimals, maybe even one for right now. Okay. So what's going to happen as I move this? I'm going to press F2. What you'll see is those green cells are going to highlight. I go down. Notice that the three, the, the 77 dropped off, but the 92 fell on. Okay, whoops, putting in pluses. Let me just do enter. Now the 83 fell off, and we picked up the number 99. So notice that in every time period, in every forecast, so the forecast for time period 9 uses actual data from time period 6, 7, and 8. And I'm taking the average of time periods 6, 7, and 8 for this forecast. So I just keep going. So the moving average process uses more information than the naive forecast does. But things to note, it treats every time period. So let's look at this forecast, which I claim is using time periods one through three. It's giving them all equal weight. See the weight is this one over n. So everything in this forecast is giving equal weight to these numbers. And that's okay if they are all equally important. Uh, it turns out they may not be equally important and we'll compensate for those that are not equally important. Okay. 
So equal importance to all numbers. What does that do to my picture? So again, let's draw a picture. I'm going to highlight the data, go to insert, charts, and I want a scatter chart. All right, what are some things that we, let me just title it, moving average. What are some things I can notice? Oh, you know, I, I really kind of want those dots in there too. Maybe I should just start chose the wrong uh, tool. So I go to insert. I want the dots to stay in my picture. Again, the vertical distance between dots is the error in the forecast. So notice some of the errors are bigger than others. In fact, some errors are not big errors at all. Okay, tell me something that's happening. First off, compared to the naive forecast, the forecast line is smoother. Okay, we'll go back to the page, the next page, you won't see these bumps. Okay, bumps are gone. Why are the bumps gone? Well, averaging removes the bumps. So, averaging does something we call smooth out data. So, you can see it in the picture. You know, there's no more jaggedness to the picture. Everything has been smoothed out. Is it a better forecast? Well, I don't know. We don't have the tools yet to judge. I know this. I, I, whatever I use to calculate errors, I won't be able to calculate errors back here. So I'm losing information by using this moving average process. But sometimes that's just the price to pay. Right. Is it a bad thing? We'll find out later. So let me put the title in. This is our moving average process. And the video is describing how to create a forecast with this moving average. Uh, thank you. Next time we'll look at a weighted moving average. Uh, and, and we'll see, you know, instead of everybody receiving the same weight, we'll alter the weight just a little bit.